Now I feel a little bit nitpicky about saying this, or I feel, I don't feel great about saying this because it's, Hi everybody and welcome, welcome to today's video. My name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. And yes, on today's video, I am really excited about this one. We are going to be talking about this guy right here, the Mizuno Wave Sky 8. The reason why I'm pretty excited, we'll get to in a sec, but I do have to get a disclosure out of the way right off the bat. This was a shoe that Mizuno sent me for the purpose of review. However, they are certainly not paying me to make this video and my thoughts and opinions are my own. All right, so why, why am I so excited about this shoe? What would make me so excited about a Max Kush daily trainer from Mizuno? Max Kush, we'll get into the stack height, over 40 millimeters. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But the reason why I'm really excited is because before this year, before I got in touch with Mizuno, before they actually told me that they were gonna be able to send me some of their shoes, I hadn't run in a Mizuno shoe ever. Now to be fair, I've only been running for a few years. I was trying to think back if I ever even owned a pair of Mizuno shoes, and I did, and they were horrible. This was probably 20 years ago now. They just, they didn't suit me at all. But since then, since then, this year, I have run in a couple of different Mizuno shoes, one being this guy here, the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, which is out of focus. Uh, there we go, the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, which has been an incredible shoe for me, and the other being the Mizuno Neo Vista. When I say the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 has been an incredible shoe for me, I mean that it is a, an aggressive, fast shoe that works well and is really fun to run in. When I say the Mizuno Neo Vista has become a staple in my shoe rotation, I mean that it has become a staple in my shoe rotation. And whenever I just need to get out there and run a run, not knowing when I'm gonna run sort of fart lick or something easy, something up tempo, it doesn't really matter. This shoe gets the job done. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the Mizuno Wave Sky 8. And I think, I think that's a little bit of a spoiler that I do like this shoe. But what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna talk about some of the specs. And then I'm gonna tell you the things that I like and the things, not so much. After that, I'll let you know whether I think the Mizuno Wave Sky 8 is worth your hard-earned cash, and ultimately, do I think that this is gonna continue, continue to sit in my shoe rotation? All right, so to quickly go over some of the specs of this shoe, the weight, we are looking at 9.9 .9 ounces or 281 grams in a U.S. men's size 9. However, I do not wear a U.S. men's size 9. I wear a U.S. men's size 13, and that tips the scale at 342 grams. Stack height in this shoe is 33 millimeters in the forefoot and 41 millimeters in the heel for an 8 millimeter drop. If you're buying this shoe in the U.S., it's gonna cost you $170. In Canadian dollars, that's 210. So things that I like, number one, is the fit. Now Mizuno has no funny business in this upper. What I mean by that is they took the things that work really well when it comes to making an upper and they just put it into this shoe. They didn't try to do anything super risky or super fancy. If you look at the eyelet chain, there's no no fancy loops or anything like that, just reinforcement around the eyelets and just a pretty standard eyelet chain. Now they are calling this upper a smooth woven material and it does conform to the foot quite well. The one thing I will say is that if you are in hotter temperatures, it does run a little bit warm. Not gonna be a concern of mine since we're coming into the fall here and we're coming into the winter. And if I'm gonna be putting lots of miles on this shoe in the winter, I'm not gonna be worried about the heat in Eastern Canada. So uh, fit has been really, really good really, really comfortable. They also did include a gusset on this tongue, which is very, very nice to see. There is some padding around the heel collar, but it's, it's, it's comfy. It's not too much, not too little. I seem to be saying that about a lot of shoes this day, these days, but I think companies are getting better and better at figuring out exactly what to put an upper, but my number one leg with this shoe is the upper. The moment that I put this shoe on and I laced it up, I didn't have to do anything fancy with it. I didn't have to worry about the lockdown. I just laced it up and ran. No funny business. So thing that I like, number two, 
the midsole. This is a comfy cruiser of a shoe. And there are a couple of different foams happening here. And the top layer is actually made up of that Mizuno Energy Next foam. It is a newer foam of theirs. It is a super critical EVA. It is the same foam that we find in the Mizuno Neo Vista. It is soft, it is squishy, it is bouncy, provides a good amount of energy return, just a whole lot of fun to run in when you've got a complete stack of that foam. But in the Mizuno Wave Sky 8, um, you're getting some of that, but the majority of the foam in this shoe is Mizuno's NRZ foam. Now it still feels cloud-like. It still feels very comfortable. It still feels very protective. You do lose just uh, some of that or a lot of that energy return funness that you get out of the NRZ Next foam if this was a complete stack of NRZ Next, which would be really, really interesting to do, but you would be giving up a little bit of stability and you probably would be giving up a little bit of durability in the shoe, just how long the shoe is gonna, gonna keep up to all the miles that you're gonna run in this. So overall, one of the things that I really, really like is that midsole. And the third thing that I like, the weight. Now it might be a little bit surprising that I mentioned the weight here because this is not the lightest shoe in the world, but hear me out. When I put this on the scale in my men's size 13, it does come in at 342 grams, and that does not make it a light shoe. But when you consider the amount of comfort that they gave you in this upper, the amount of padding that's there, the denseness and just, just the overall protection that you get from that midsole and the generous amount of rubber that you have on this outsole, somehow they kept it in the range of what I would consider a pretty acceptable weight for a daily trainer. You've got 41 millimeters in the heel and 33 millimeters in the forefoot. So lots of foam underfoot. And with a package like that, if you were to give me those specs and you were not going to tell me what the weight of the shoe was, I would actually put it quite a bit heavier than it comes out on the scale. And when I'm out there on the run, for what the purpose of this shoe is, is that it doesn't need to be the lightest shoe in the world. It just can't have a weight that makes it a shoe that I just don't want to run in. So considering all the things that it does have, I'm really, really impressed with the weight of this. By the way, if you are watching this video and you're currently not subscribed, please consider subscribing on this channel. And this is gonna seem really, really small the most. I just passed 2,500 subscribers and that just, that blows my mind. And for those of you out there who are long-term subscribers and provide feedback, comments to my videos, and just share my videos out there to the world, thank you, thank you. I really honestly do appreciate it and it motivates me every time I see new subscribers to this channel to just keep sharing my thoughts about shoes, my thoughts about training that I'm doing. Let's get back to talking about the Mizuno Wave Sky 8. So we've talked about the things that I like with the Mizuno Wave Sky 8. Now let's move on to a few things that are just not so much. And the number one thing in that category is the overlays. Now I feel a little bit nitpicky about saying this. Or I feel, I don't feel great about saying this because it's not gonna affect the ride. It's not gonna affect the way the shoe actually performs out there on the run. It is simply a cosmetic thing, but the overlay on the shoe is falling off on the medial side, on the right shoe, it is falling off. Now, when this first happened, when I looked down and saw this, and I have just a little bit over a hundred kilometers in this shoe, um, I was gonna reach down and completely tear this off because I knew it wouldn't affect the quality of the shoe in terms of the ride and the feel as you're out there on the run. And generally, I don't really, the, the look of the shoe is not number one importance to me when it comes to running shoe. It's important. I want the shoe to look good, but it's not overly important. But I did wanna leave it on there to be able to show you this. Uh, generally, Mizuno, one of the things that I've praised them for in the past, and this is also one of the reasons why I feel a little bit bad even bringing this one up, is that they are really, really good with the quality of their shoes. It feels like they put a lot of time and effort into the detail in just making a good quality shoe. There's no little bits of glue anywhere. It doesn't look, feel, look or feel like the shoe has been just slapped together. Normally they're really high quality shoes, but the overlays on this, and as I'm looking here on the lateral side, this one just feels like there's a chance that it might, might start to come off a little bit too. So the overlays are starting to fall off. It's not gonna affect the way the shoe runs whatsoever, but certainly, certainly 
Something that just irks me just a little bit. And number two on the list of things that are just not quite so much for me is that outsole rubber. There's just a little bit too much of it. Now, to be fair, I know why Mizuno puts this much rubber on a shoe like this is that they want to have good durability in their shoe and I appreciate that. And there are some flex grooves here that actually do provide a good amount of flex so the rubber is not impacting it that much. But because of the thickness of this rubber, that midsole that I really, really enjoy, that I say is not overly energetic, the amount of rubber actually adds to that lack of energy return, does deaden the feel just a little bit more when you're out there on the run, which means for me, you could lighten the shoe up even more. And I already said that I like the weight given how much they put into the shoe, but you could lighten it up even a little bit more if you decrease the amount of rubber on the bottom of the shoe and still get really, really good durability out of it. So number two, and the things that are just not so much, again, probably being a little bit nitpicky, is that outsole rubber. So I've gotta be a little bit honest with you here. When I was first making up some notes for this video, I had tried to think of three things that I really liked with this shoe and three things that were just not so much for me. And the third thing on that list was gonna be price. But when I think about where the shoe fits into my rotation in shoes that I've had in the past that I said were priced really, really well relative to what they actually gave me, the Saucony Triumph 20, I ended up running over 8,000 kilometers or 600 miles in that shoe. The A6 Nimbus 25, I ended up running over 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles in that shoe. And both of those shoes were priced the same as the Mizuno Wave Sky 8 at $210 Canadian, which I think for me is right where this shoe should be placed relative to the amount of miles the amount of kilometers that I think I'm gonna be able to get out of this and how many places I can use it during the week. I do a lot of 80, 20 style running, so the majority of my running is easy, and this shoe can handle all of those runs if I really want it to. So pricing is right kind of where it needs to be, but if I am gonna throw one last thing that is just not so much with this shoe, it's probably gonna to have to be the warm upper. Now I get it. I talked about the upper and how comfortable it was in things that I really, really like. So maybe, maybe this shouldn't exist on this list, but it is a little bit warm. So if you are somebody again out there who is running in warmer climates, it might be something that you want to take a closer look at because there's not good breathability in this upper. It's really comfortable, but it's not that breathable. Now, do I think this shoe is worth your hard earned cash if you were to go out and purchase it? I think it is. I think Mizuno has been doing a great job with their shoes so far this year. I've got one more shoe. Actually, I'm looking at it right now behind the camera up on the shelf. I've got one more shoe from Mizuno that I haven't actually ran in yet. So there will be another Mizuno review coming fairly soon on this channel. A little bit of a daily trainer. So it might be competing for this shoe with a spot in my shoe rotation for some of those daily runs. That's it, guys. My name is Matt, and this has been What Matters to Matt. And ultimately, what matters to me most is my family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Step one, wake up, brother, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.